Welcome to Spotlight on Laurel, Her History and Her People. Uh, this is episode number 15 in our series of at least 50 of these that uh, we're committed to bringing you weekly throughout the course of a year. And uh, before we get started today and introduce you to our guest, I want to let you know what kind of impact we're having on, uh, on the community by uh, reading you a post from the other day. Actually, it's a comment on the last video we did, which was with uh, Imogene Bowling. And uh, this person apparently was a teacher, which is fitting because we're out of school today. Uh, she said, you chose a person who deserved to be honored. I wish teachers in Laurel County would include these interviews in part of their lesson plans and give extra credit to students who would research the people who have contributed so much in making Laurel County a great place to live. God bless you and your family is what this person said. And uh, of course we said thank you, but that's, uh, that was quite an honor, I thought. We, we get a lot of comments like that's the first one we've got actually from a teacher. But this uh, series is brought to you uh, in part by the video guy and the Sentinel Echo. And today we're at East Bernstadt Independent School. And um, we feel very fortunate to actually I'm wearing school colors on purpose today. I, I have a lot of blue in my wardrobe though, I won't lie. But today we feel very fortunate to have our old buddy and, uh, and dear friend Gene Allen <laughs> as our guest. Gene, good to see you, buddy. Good to be here. So, Gene, uh, I'd first like to begin by letting folks know that we served in the same uh, capacity as school board members, you and I did, uh, together um, here at the place we're conducting this interview. And I also want to thank Ms. Jones and, uh, of course, for having us here and Ms. Smith. But th this is an excellent school system, a very proud school system, and, uh, and what makes it great is its board members. I, each one of you were so very kind to me. Uh, back in 2004, kind of showed me showed me the ropes, and for that I'll always be grateful. I've got a little funny story at the end. I'm gonna save it for the end, but, uh, <laughs> but between you and I, but uh, but you guys really did. You mentored me very well, and and uh, I'll I'll never forget that. So I appreciate that. Uh, but you, you're presently the longest serving school board member in the state. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, well, I like to start these interviews by. Uh, well, of course, we'll get back to the school in a minute, but asking you about your personal history. Uh, beginning with your parents, your siblings, around and up through to Betty and your kids and grandkids. Tell us about Gene Allen. <laughs> I was born right up at Pittsburgh. Okay. Right close to where Vicky was raised. In what, what year were you born? 1943. <laughs> okay, all right. So just after the Great Depression. Yeah. 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 So your mom and dad then, what kind, who were they and what kind of people? My dad was, they called him Buster Allen. Everybody knew him, but Buster, his name was Charles Lester. Okay. My mother, and he was raised in, down below Hazel Green, down there at Oakley. Okay. My mother was Cordelia Reed. She was raised in Clay County. Okay. Over on Robson Creek. Okay. So I got a lot of kin folks in Clay County. Well, I've, I've learned through the course of these interviews that uh, we have a lot of pe people migrated to Laurel from Clay in the yeah. mid-1900s. Mid yeah. 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 Uh, so your, your mother's people were Reeds. Reeds. Yeah. And uh, what did you say your dad did for a living? He run a bulldozer for Greer Brothers. Okay, all right. Most of the time. Okay, and uh, and you said you were born in Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's around. Uh, uh, did your dad do any railroading? You were telling he me he did work there. for the railroad too. He so you were born actually in in a section me? house, sir. In a section house. Right below that little underpass. Sir. Is that right? Yeah. And, uh, wow. So right. your brothers and sisters. How many of those did you have? I had two brothers, Jerry Allen. He was an engineer for L&N. Okay. He, he's passed away. Uh -huh. And then my brother Earl Allen, and he's passed away. Yeah, yeah. So you're the last one last of one. them left. So, Gene, you're, uh, and then, of course, you, you met Betty, and you married Betty. And <laughs> Sue Bennett College. Okay, yeah. That, that changed your life for the better. It did. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Betty's a good person, yeah. And you guys got two boys. Two sons, right? Yeah. Tell, tell us about them and the well, grandkids. Yeah, Charles, my oldest son, works for CSX now. I come from a railroad family. Yeah. And uh, he's got four children, two girls and two boys. They're, they're precious little children. Oh, yeah. And, of course, my youngest son, Mark, he retired from the state police. And uh, now he's working for the... Criminal Justice Department in Richmond. He loves it. 
Is that right? And I, I'm yeah. glad they're both doing good. Yeah, great, great. Betty so, raised two good kids. <laughs> Betty did, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what was Laurel County like in, in you know, like in those – in the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, and what kind of significant changes have you seen in Laurel County over the years? Seen a lot of changes. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, it's, I went to school here, started in 49. I was born in 43 and started school right here at East Princeton in 49. Mm -hmm. It was a high school at that time. Okay, when I went through high school. I remember me being a little bitty fella going up to the high school where the big kids was. They'd run me back down. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, you little boy. Yeah. But it, it was a different thing. Yeah. And, of course, there have been so many changes in the school system. Mm -hmm. When I went, we'd get a little nickel worth of paper and a pencil, and that was our supplies. Yeah. And yeah. then we had a chalkboard, right. some chalk, you know. Yeah. And, of course, over the years, you see what we got now, oh, smart it's... boards. Oh, yeah. Technology has, Technology really, has grown. really grown. Yeah. So the, the old school was fairly new. When, when I started. first started, 13-year-old. Yeah. It was built in 36. Old. Okay, 1936. And I noticed those pictures as we came in, and I've seen those before, but I'm glad you all have them displayed here. But And one of them has a, a outside, you can see the scaffolding and stuff where they're building the old school, yeah. and it has the WPA sign there, the right. work sign there, the work zone sign there. Which is a very historic picture, historic. you know. But but yeah, you, yeah. So you you've definitely seen your share of changes, and you began. Uh, well, tell me about your work history, Gene. First, before, before we jump into school board, here. Uh, you worked at I think Kearns. Kearns right? Bakery. I, I worked there forty three years. Forty three years before you retired. Drove yeah. a truck. You was a lot of people's bread man. Yeah, the bread man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you began your school board stint here in the nineteen sixties. Would have put you. In your 20s. 20, yeah, you have to be 24, I think, 23 or 24. And so you ran for, shortly after you were eligible to run, yeah. I, I imagine. Um, and you've been running for school board. What what prompted you to want to be on the school board? You know, I've always loved children. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized teachers, I always wanted to get teachers a raise if I could. Right. And, of course, I still think they need a little bit of a raise more right, right. now. Uh -huh. But uh, they were bad underpaid when I first started. And, of course, I didn't have nothing to do much, you know, just one board member. Right. But I always worked to try to get them raised. Back. You just had a heart for teachers. Had a heart for teachers. And what they did for the kids. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a great reason to serve. Um, but, but, you know, you, you began uh, your stint here in the 60s. And uh, do you remember what year that was? Exactly? I was elected in 1966. Okay. Of course, we started January '67. I was one year old then. You one year yeah, old. <laughs> not many things make me feel young anymore. You know, I make you feel but young. That, but but that 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 kind of does. But now, so you told us a little bit about what things were like when you started school here. But the '60s was generally turbulent years for our country. Yes, sir. And uh, were, was this community kind of sheltered from a lot of that, or did? Was that something that uh, you, you felt here as well? Oh, we felt here. The Vietnam War was very... Yeah. Had a lot of good friends go burn, you know, not come and back. And not come back, yeah. And some come back and had Agent Orange and yeah. died early. Yeah. Then I don't know if you saw the interview I conducted with Mr. Roy Schott, but he was telling us about... Uh, well, and Owen Edwards, too, I think. Owen, Owen Edwards touched on this. that uh, Mr. Schott was in the Korean War. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Edwards was a World War II veteran, and uh, they were talking about uh, post-traumatic stress and how that at those, during those days they didn't they didn't really know how to treat it, and they didn't even have a name for it mm -hmm. uh, uh, very much. But those guys were scarred too. You know, I think post-traumatic stress disorder probably came on uh, as as a cause after the Vietnam War, but the World War II guys were kind of left to their own devices. Yeah. You know, nobody yeah. knew what to do with them. Um, and now they do treat those guys. But the 60s, a turbulent time, civil rights movement was going yeah. on. There were a lot of things. So, and, and a lot of reasons to want to serve in some capacity. Yes. You know, and you, you just kept right on running and running and running until here we are. Here we uh, are. 52 years you've served. Been elected 13 times. 13 but times. I, nobody running against me next time, so I'll be elected 14 times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, the, the, but the folks 
that you've served, uh, who, who have served under you or, you know, the board, uh, the, the, the down through the years, um, as you began your journey and now here we are these many years later, but the, uh, like you're the first superintendent that you served under was who? Mr. Mason, Rotha Mason. Okay. All right. And then how many have, have you seen come and go? There's only four superintendents I've worked with. That says a lot about the school system. Though, it does a lot about And the board, yes. So, Mr. Mason. Mr. Arthur Mason. Miss Elsie Morgan was a principal. Okay, all right. And then Mr. Wiggins. And Mr. Wiggins. And uh, he served uh, he, quite some years. I believe 17 years, now I'm not sure about that, but he's-, he's he, His grandson is a member of our audience today. Yeah. yeah. So Mr. Wiggins, so you don't know exactly how long he I served. believe it was 17 years he 17 was years. superintendent. Okay. And Mr. Radford, of course, he was the superintendent when I came on. Yeah. In 2000, the mid 2000s, I think, was when I came on, but he had been serving for some time at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, we're up to present day now. Uh, I don't mind saying you guys have the nicest looking superintendent uh, that you've elected yet. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> but she, I was part of that <laughs> process here too. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, you see these little guys and gals here. And of course, it always, you're over here a lot. Mm -hmm. and it it warms your heart to see them. Uh, but this is one of the poorest economic areas in the county. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that. Um, but but to, to know that you're making a difference here was always very special to me. Yeah. You know, um, you know, only heaven has a record of the lives, really, Gene, that you've touched down through the years. I, I, I hate to be sweet and sappy like that with you because we always cut up, but that's true. Yeah. You know, you've, you, you just, the years pile up and uh, there's a lot of people who have been uh, moved and touched by the things that have been done here uh, with this school yeah. system in, in this community. You know, what, one, of the, one of the things I noted was there were aging problems with the elementary building and gym when we, you know, in the mid 2000s there. And, and I, I would like to commend Mr. Radford uh, for uh, getting the ball rolling on this. He did, he done a good job. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Bicky done a good job continuing with it. Yes, she has. But I, I always said you sure don't run for the school board for, for, the, for, for the pay. No. You, you know, if you're looking to make a, a, you know, a lot of money at a political job, this is not the one for <laughs> you. You need to go home, don't you? <laughs> but, but, you know, and sometimes it gets tough. You know, like you, you have to make cuts. Uh, you have to make tough choices. And so, but you've weathered every storm, Gene. Mm -hmm up to this day. Uh, but tell us about some of the things that stand out as a, as a school board member over the years, down through the years. The people I've met, I've met so many. And you know, I've actually served with a, a lot of people on the board. They've been a lot of people on the board in them 52 years. You've seen a lot of people come and go yeah. on that board. And yeah, yes. a lot of fine people, uh, yeah. good people, yeah. neighbors. Yeah. And I got along with every one of them. Every, and I think that's part of your longevity was because you got along with people. Yeah. You get along with people, you know. But uh, maybe the hardest issue that you faced in your time as school board member here. When I worked and went to work at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3, uh -huh. it was hard to stay up there. <laughs> I, tell, I tell Jim Sutton, uh -huh. they start, I'd say, now I'm going to call you all about 3 in the morning when I get up. <laughs> you hold the meeting you too long. You tell me that. Yeah. yeah, you're still working there, right? Yeah, yeah. First, uh, first yeah, got so on I'll, I'll just call you guys when I get up in the morning. Well, you know, that says a lot, though, about the school system. If that's the toughest thing you faced, yeah. you know, uh, personally was that. But uh, th this, this does run pretty smoothly down here. It, oh, think. yes, Greg. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, you can't, one of the things that, that I remember uh, about the new versus the old, you, you can't buy history, but... Uh, that's the thing. Obviously, a gentrification happens in all these communities, and you have sometimes you have a little bit of backlash. It's not always a good thing. Here, uh, luckily, I think no one can complain about education. Uh, there's no doubt this school is, is the shining beacon of a community that sorely needs a beacon of light. And this school, that's how it stands out to me in my mind. Yeah. It, it really, uh, you can't put a price tag on that. No. You know, touching so many kids' lives down through the years. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's amazing. Um, 
I got to tell this one on Eugene. When I was first selected, of course, you know, I was green and you know, wide-eyed and wanting to learn and didn't know a whole lot about serving as a school board member. Uh, but we go to uh, Louisville for our conference, you know, state conference there. It's my first time. And, uh, of course, you know, everybody's there. And Gene says, let's take a little walk here. Uh, so, and, you know, of course, you were, to me, I was looking at you as a mentor, and, and, and you certainly were that for me. But uh, Gene says, come on, let's, you know, walk down through here with me. He said, I'll, I'll show you around a little bit of stuff. And there was a, we were down there on 4th Street, and at the time, there was a house of ill repute there. Oh, and I'm not trying to get you in trouble here, <laughs> but uh, Gene, Gino, and I know you probably remember that. He was like, you kind of nudged me like that. You said, listen, are they out of view of everybody? I said, yeah, they're going up the street. He said, let's dip in here. Which you weren't serious, but at the time I didn't know that. <laughs> and so I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? You know, yeah, yeah, because uh, you got that little angel that jumps up on this shoulder, little devil yeah, jumps yeah. up on that one. So uh, you got me pretty good there. You got me pretty good there. I was going, but I was going to honor what you wanted to do. Go, there, you know? Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that was that was my introduction to you, and that's something that stands out. I'll never forget. But but I I do appreciate you taking me under your wing, and then we kind of stuck together and, and got some things done here. You know, yeah. uh, and you know here it it runs very smoothly. I don't think we ever had a dissenting. Uh, no, we were very, if we did, very few. You know, we're, yeah, and uh, so that's that's also a testament to the kind of people that are elected to the board down. Yeah. You know, it really is. Uh, but, so congratulations on uh, now being, how long have you been the longest serving? How, pretty, uh, let's see. I know Just the, like, the fellow from Barberville was yeah, uh, always a little bit, you know. Shirley Treadway, he was, he yeah. was he'd been there 52 years too. Yeah, yeah. Did he finally, did he? He, he retired. Retired, okay. All right. After he'd been there 50 something years. 52. Yeah. And I know you're very well known throughout the uh, school board uh, circles because everybody knows Gene. Gene, yeah. you know, you've seen a lot of people come and go, not just here. You've seen a lot of people come and go with the Laurel County School Board. Yeah, and we've always got along great with Laurel County. You know, they've been good to us. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's another good thing. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, when uh, these new schools were being built uh, and back in the... Uh, 30s, they, they built a lot of them, 20s, 30s, 40s. But then when they needed new schools down the road, uh, like for example, Laurel Kane is a good example of this. London was an independent system. Mm -hmm. And then they opted to go along with Laurel County. East first that did not, mm -hmm. uh, but still always got along with them. A lot of the cities, uh, the smaller cities like Williamsburg, Barberville, Corbin, those are good examples of schools who did not opt to go into the county yeah. school systems. Uh, London did, it's, it, it stands out that way because it's one that did, but he's first that did not. And uh, you guys, at the time you had a high school, do you remember when that, uh, when the high school was disbanded and was it the time Laurel County came aboard or, or not? I believe it was 1955. 1955. So you started sending them to Hazel Green probably. Hazel then. Green in London. London's where they sent most of Oh, London I went school. to Hazel Green. Yeah. Hazel Green High School in London High yeah. School. Okay. So 1955 was when. I'm pretty sure it was yeah. 55. Okay. So you weren't serving then. You probably don't No, I was just a kid. The why, the why of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why they did that. But um, but they opted to stay uh, independent down here. And it does run really smoothly with the county school system. It runs great. Laurel County has it, not just East Burnstadt, uh, but East Burnstadt, of course, is a great example of a, just a, a wonderful school. But Laurel County has many of those. Oh gosh, it's they, great they, system. They, they do a good job there too. Yeah. You know, so and you think about your all's budget down here, and you times that by fifty. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know how you know how it would compare, but it's a lot. They deal with a lot, a lot, a lot of issues and a lot of financial things, um, and uh, but but uh, yeah, it's it's until you serve in that capacity, you really can't realize uh, how heartwarming it is. You, know? right. you got any tales to tell on anybody? Because we got these cameras rolling. <laughs> no. uh, you know, I would like to mention when I first got on school board, uh, you know where we met? Most time it's Mr. Morgan's house there in that rock building where wow. Fields live. You met at his house. It, met at the house, which is in a 
you know, in the little living room. Yeah. And of course, now we meet in the library a lot of times, but we're fixing to build a new board mem- uh, room. Yeah. Uh, you know, y'all need to get on that because we've been it's, talking about that ever since I left here. See, I left right when the new school, we, we saw, well, you know, saw it through, and then uh, I moved to town, moved to the big city. Moved off. Yeah, <laughs> moved off. And, but, you know, that was, i tell you something. Leaving this school system was the hardest thing about leaving this place. I remember you hated to leave. I hated man. to leave. You know, to. I really didn't want to. Uh, and I, I would have stayed if I could, but, but that's how special it is. Because, like I said, you ain't in it for the money. No. You know. So it, 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 you can't tell anything on Jim Sutton? I better not. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. He's another we, one that, of course, we served together, you know. Yeah. And, uh, that's, Folks came and went, but I think uh, we were all three mainstays during my time here. Yeah. yeah. You and Jim and I, and then we had some other rotating chairs there. But uh, but it's uh, it's always nice, and no one ever runs against you, Gene. What, what is it? They know better? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about t- I, twice we had a, somebody run against me, I think. Twice in your history? I believe about twice the whole time. Two out of 13 or 14 times you ran and, not, and only had opposition. You I know, know I, once I got on here, I didn't either, you know. Yeah. But, um, but sometimes there will be people run down here. Oh, you know? yeah. But I guess they know better than to try to mess with you, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you know, so. let's talk a little bit about some folks uh, that you remember, like Moss Feltner. Moss, Moss is a great one. Moss, Moss. Uh, he loves this school system. He, loves, and he, yeah. he stands out to me because of his work at, work ethic and just a lot of things that was going on during my years. Moss served here. Yeah. You know, during my years, Moss was a large figure here. Oh, yeah. You know, small in stature, but a, a large in, you know, yeah. in influence in what he did. You know, Moss's dad was on the board here at one time, and okay. then he had a brother with the okay. Moss. Okay. So that family's really been involved in, in this school system for, for many, many for years. years. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Moss has been in ill health, they say. He's been bad in yeah. bad health. Yeah, that's what I'd, I'd heard that. Yeah, and, I, and I hate to hear that. Yeah. You know, you know but, you, you know, that's unfortunately that happens, you know, in life. And stuff. Yeah. Those folks are hard to replace, though. Yeah, they are. You never really replace them. No. You know, you, you can replace them in body, but you can't replace them in spirit. Yeah. So, uh, before we turn these cameras off, I, I'm trying to get you to give me some juice on somebody, but you just, <laughs> you're not going to talk much, you know. Betty might get you when you get home. Yeah. <laughs> Gene, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. It's Jerry. been a pleasure, buddy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.